Hello, welcome to my gathering basket. My name is Danelle. Thank you for joining me in my sporadic updates on my crafty and homesteading life. Oh my, what a summer, right? <laughs> I haven't been in as frequently as I wanted to, anywhere close to as often as I wanted to, but it has allowed me to get some content to share with you. So I'd like to catch you up on my knitting, spinning, quilting, butterfly raising, gardening, all sorts of things in a very quick manner. <laughs> so let's start out with spinning. I have been spinning. I've actually been spinning every morning. Um, my routine has been to fix myself some tea and while the tea is steeping, I run out take care of the chickens, get them let out for the day and fed and watered and all of that, water my, my flowers outside and then run inside. By that time my tea is steeped, I can sit in my recliner, listen to my Bible reading for the day and spin. So I use my Ashford e-spinner, which is an electric spinner. Um, and I have been making, oh, I usually have about 20 minutes in the morning that I can get some spinning done and I have managed to rack up some yardage. In fact, if you're an observant viewer, you may have noticed that the wool here has changed colors because I had to move the bottom crate up to the top because I am nearly finished with one of the bags of yarn that was in there. And I told you last time that I was hoping to spin for the Bly Cardigan by Amy Christophers. And so I had bought about a pound, I believe, of several different kinds of shades of BFL when I was at Play Away a couple years ago. So I have been spinning about a hundred grams a week and I thought I had plenty of the one kind of marled color, and I'm not sure that I'm going to. I have 300 grams spun up so far, and I just started on my fourth bobbin. So that is looking like this. It's a little bit marled, heathery. This is the first ply. I am thinking I'm gonna do a two ply. I had thought about doing a three ply, but I definitely won't have enough yarn, enough fiber to do that. So I have a little sample that I have spun up with a two ply and I think, or it's actually just the ply back sample that I did. So I've got that washed, um, drying so that I can see kind of, I think this is going to puff up quite a little bit. So I don't know if this is going to be the Bly sweater like I hoped or not. We'll see, but I really think I'm going to do a two ply and just see what kind of yardage I have. Maybe it'll be enough, maybe it won't. I have another pound of a very similar, this, and I should have brought over a sample of the fiber. Um, maybe I can insert a picture, but this one has white and kind of this taupey gray brown mixed together in the same roving. And I have some white here, and I also have that um, gray brown, very, very close. Of that's just the solid gray brown. So one possibility, depending on how much yardage I have, is to use this for the body and then do the edging in the solid color. So I have that all pulled out of my crate here. It was just over a pound, I believe. So that's going to be the next on the wheel. So I had just under 500 grams of this. I believe I've got 175 left to go. I have <clears throat> One bobbin wound off onto my super fancy storage bobbins, AKA toilet paper roll. <laughs> so I have that wound up for plying and got it all set up. So in the morning I can actually start on my fourth bobbin. So I'm really excited. It feels so good to be getting some spinning done. Um, and that's a good thing because I actually ordered some more from my friend Peggy at the hundredth sheep. She had a, colorway that was absolutely stunning grays to blues um beautiful and we were chatting back and forth on facebook and i said you know i really really want to see what that looks up spun up as a fractal spin and she said you are reading my mind i would love to see that and i said all right sold send me one and i will do it up so i need to finish this project and then get on to that fractal ply when i get it so I'm really excited about that and the fact that I have been spinning. 
And then, speaking of spinning, I showed you last time the yarn that I had spun up to make the gnome, Mystery Knit Along Gnome. I am a sucker for these things. Sarah Shira of Imagined Landscapes, a couple times a year, I believe, does a mystery gnome along. I don't handle mystery knit alongs very well, quilt alongs, any of that. I like to know what I'm going for. <laughs> so this one had a couple remakes, but here he is. I like the end result. Now, if you look up her pattern or look at the hashtag on Instagram, this was supposed to be marled all the way through. And I mixed up the colors um, from what I intended. I, I didn't quite guess right. She gives a lot of clues for appropriate yarn choices and color choices. And um, the only thing she told us for sure was the color that would be used on the beard. So I knit the hat just about complete. I didn't quite finish the spiral at the top, which isn't that cute. And people have done all sorts of variations, making little, um, one lady, I'm gonna, if I get a chance to make another one, I'm going to try this, um, had put a, a pipe cleaner in this little eye cord. So instead of sewing it all together, she had shaped it into, I forget, it was a flower, I think. Um, so sweet. But I like the solid colors better than the marling. So you're supposed to hold two strands together and she had you at different points changing up the, um, the different combinations. Um, I kind of did that on the hat. Um, I, I started the brim with obviously this color and this color and then faded it into just the solid purple and then faded into the lighter color and then finally the white um, for the last few rows and then into the little spiral. So this is not the true mystery knit along, but I did finish it in the time allotted. I just kind of got far enough that I could figure out what was going to be used where and then I actually ripped back the whole hat. I did it a couple times until I had the gnome that I wanted. So he is so cute. He has a cabled beard and the puffiest little nose. And then he's got a kangaroo pocket. Is that not sweet? Like now I want to go back and put kangaroo pockets on my gnomes. So <laughs> I think it makes him look like he's wearing a robe. She said something about it looking like a hoodie, um, but I think he just looks like a very wise gnome wearing a robe. So these were all hand spun. I dyed, this was the natural color, and then I did dye the purple with the logwood, two different shades or strengths of the logwood. And then this was a, and I believe all of this was on Romney wool. And then the body of the gnome was a, it was a purchased roving or top. I believe it was one of the Ashland Bay. So it was a silk merino blend. The rest of it, I believe, like I said, was Romney. Um, and I hand spun all of this on my e-spinner. So very quick spin. I love working with my hand spun. Every time I do it, which is not very often, not as often as it should be, but every time I do it, I, I, I am so pleased with the results. <laughs> I'm one of those that spin something and I see all the imperfections and frankly, my gnome didn't care. So all of you spinners out there, because I know there are some of you, um, knit with your hand spun. It is so much fun. So I am very happy with my little gnomey um, and I really need to get some more made. I need a gnome family. My friend Mary has an entire gnome family of just this style. Um, and. Every time I see her little gnomes, <laughs> I want it more, but, and they're a very fast knit. So there's the gnome mystery gnome along. And then, um, I haven't been doing a lot of knitting lately. Not as much as I would like. I do have a couple socks on the go. Um, I amazingly enough have some dishcloths on the go. I did do some hot pads. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about those more later, maybe in another episode. This one, I just started today because I, did not have any color work and it was driving me crazy. So every Sunday, I like to listen to the recording, the video of uh, Lerwick Baptist Church from Lerwick, Shetland. And I like to have some Fair Isle to work on while I'm watching that. And this is, oh, I'll do it this way. 
So these are the Advent Mittens. The pattern has been around. It was on a blog. You could also buy the whole thing condensed into one PDF on Ravelry, but I'm just using the blog. Um, very good instructions. I did change the cuff just a little bit to do a standard corrugated rib. Um, and I've done this today. So there's, the num and obviously these aren't blocked, so hopefully this will pop out a little bit more, but each mitten has a number. Now I am insane, but not quite insane enough to think that I am going to get all 24 done before Advent starts in, in December or November. Um, but <laughs> I'm figuring this is a long-term project. I have been wanting to do it for years. It's never going to get done if I don't start. So I'm on number one. I went ahead and printed out the first three and figured if I get those three done this year, great. I can always print out more. And if I don't get them done, there's always next year. This is Jameson and Smith. Um, they're jumper weight. These are actually colors. The gray is some that I had bought when I was doing hats. And then the red and the white are ones that I bought on cone to use with my knitting machine. And I am embarrassed to say that I have not had a chance to do anything with that knitting machine. So when I bought those colors, it was partly with this project in mind. So I have just been rolling off little balls of it at a time. It does not take very much. Um, I am, you can tell I am just about to the point where I am going to put the thumb gusset here onto waste yarn and then finish up the hand. So I think it was 54 rows altogether. And if I remember right, I'm on like row 28 or something. So I'm about half done. Um, knitting at the tight gauge like this kind of hurts my hand just a little bit. So I don't know if I will finish this. I was hoping I could do one, like do one every Sunday, but I don't know if I will get this done or not today. Um, but just a cute project. I am so happy to have these started. Um, and who knows, it may be a five-year project. I may have them done before Advent. I don't know. <laughs> but there's my other project that I just started today and I'm super happy with how it's coming out. So I did kind of drop some hints, to talk about what we called quilt camp this summer. It was back in June and four of my knitting buddies and I got together at my house and we had a weekend project quilting camp. Um, basically everything has been canceled, all of the retreats, the classes, the seminars, the conventions, all of that is gone. Um, so we decided to make our own and a couple, one, let's see, a couple of them have not done really any quilting. A couple of them have made several quilts and made many more sets. <laughs> and so kind of all different levels of, of quilters, but we picked a project and this was our theme fabric. This was the block that we did. We did a table runner. So it was just four of those blocks put together. And this is what started it all. We, I saw this one day at the quilt shop when I was working. And so I texted it to all of them and said, Hey, look, it's sheep and sweaters and they're fair isle sweaters, just my style or something. And they all thought it was really, really cute. So we had been talking about quilt camp and we decided that it had to be something using this. So I came up with this, um, found this pattern for this table runner. It's actually very simple. Um, and the fact that when you get one block done, you have everything you need to know to do the whole thing. So, um, and we were able to work on sashings and um, bias seams and putting on borders and setting cornerstones. And so I loaded one backing onto, um, and it was this fun stuff. So I loaded this all up and then at the end, everybody got their table runner put together and we put them all on the quilting machine and everybody was able to pick what pattern they wanted and we quilted it before they left. We did not get all the binding done. I was very sorry that we didn't get a chance to do that, but everybody has since. In fact, I was the last one to get mine finished, of course. Um, but we picked this really fun, swirly, pattern with a star in it. So back here, all of these stars are actually the quilting and it's called Midnight Sparkle. Um, and I think all but one person ended up choosing this pattern. So that was a lot of fun. 
and like I said, I finally got the um, binding put on mine and I tried a new to me technique for doing machine binding. Um, this was something that I am working on um, sending quilts to a specific charity that actually requires all of the bindings to be done on machines. So I thought this is a great chance to practice. If it doesn't look phenomenal, um, it's going on my kitchen island. Um, nobody's going to see the back and really probably nobody's going to pay much attention to the front. So I did that and followed a tutorial from a fellow long armor. Um, and I will try to link to her Instagram. I don't know that I can link to the video because I believe it was just on Instagram, um, but you can look up her account and I think she has it saved in her stories. So um, this is my backing and for my first attempt at doing machine binding, I was plain pleased. So um, you actually attach your binding for those that you that do quilt. You attach your binding just like you would on the front. You flip it over and she shows you how to do a glue basting technique. And so you, you glue and iron the back with just a washable fabric glue. Um, and then you stitch in the ditch on the front. And that was the magic. So I need practice. It's not something I'm going to be offering quite yet for customer quilts, but I am excited that I actually have a technique that has worked for me and um, I'm going to keep practicing. And hopefully that will be something I will be able to offer other people as well as being able to do the charity quilts that require that to be done. Um, it's a very sturdy binding. Um, it's still machine done. I love hand binding, but it is quicker and it doesn't have the same, um, when you've already got arthritis setting in on your fingers, <laughs> it's nice to have another option. So that is, um, that's what I've gotten finished in quilting. What is coming up in quilting, I am so excited about. Um, and this is another one that the Long Arm League, which is a group of long arm quilters that I belong to, um, from time to time, we help sponsor quilt alongs. So you have knit alongs, you also have quilt alongs, same kind of thing. And this popped up and they asked for quilters to participate, Trophy Buck by Hobbs Designs. And I, I loved this. <laughs> I'm thinking it's going to be a gift. I know who it's gonna to go to. Um, this is foundation paper piecing. I call foundation paper piecing quilt by number. Uh, or paint by number for quilters um, because basically it is all drawn out and she has a, I'm not going to show you the inside, give away all the secrets here, um, but she does have a, have everything color coded on a grid and you actually sew to paper on the back. The fun part is all of these antlers that would be a nightmare to piece because everyone is a little different because it's drawn out and you're sewing on lines on paper, sewing fabric to paper and then you flip them and iron them. And oh my goodness, if you're at all interested in quilting and doing um, graphic quilts like this, look up some videos. If I get a chance to find some, I'll try to link to one or two that I think are good. Um, foundation paper piecing is fiddly. Um, it's not the, it, it does have a lot of fabric waste or it can have, um, but you get these sharp, detailed corners and pieces and color shadings and all that that would be really hard with traditional piecing. So I am really excited. I've made some changes on the colors, um, partly because I couldn't get locally all of the colors that she had listed. Um, and then I am doing mine with kind of a green. Um, the green will be like here and down. And then I have kind of a midnight um, blue that I'm going to use up here. And in my head, this is going to be really pretty. <laughs> so it looks more like a deer against a night sky. So, um, I am really excited about making mine. The, the quilt along starts a week from tomorrow <laughs> and I've had a hard time. Fortunately, I've had so many customer quilts that I've had to do. Um, I'm sorry, this is glaring. Um, that I haven't had the time to actually work on this. So I'm, I'm really, 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 can you tell I'm excited about getting started on this? <laughs> and then um, because I'm one of the group that is um, helping to sponsor the, the quilt along, um, anybody that sends me 
their quilt top by, I think it's next February. So the quilt along itself, I think is like 12 weeks. Um, so it should be plenty of time, but not so much time that you lose interest. Um, I'm still one of those that tends to either race ahead or I get sidetracked and I will see how that goes, but I'm really excited about getting this done. I actually, I actually have enough to make two. I, I would like in my head, I would like to make two. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know if that's a reality this year, next year, or in 10 years, um, but I would like to make two, and I'm already mulling over quilting designs that I would like to put in it, or on it, um, but anybody that sends me the tops, or there's four other long armors that are sponsoring this one, um, then we have a discounted price for the quilting services for that. So, um, super excited about doing my own as well as being able to be part of the crew offering um, those services. So that's going to be next up. It starts next week. Um, I have a bunch of customer quilts in my queue and some custom quilts to make for people. Um, so I'm going to have to work fast. There might be a lot of caffeine and a lot of short nights in my future. <laughs> Um, homestead wise, it is definitely fall. Um, the garden is starting to fade. Um, we are still getting a lot of tomatoes. We are still selling some at one of the local markets. Um, I am working on finishing up the butterfly. In fact, I, I just had the last of my swallowtail butterflies that was released a couple days ago. Um, I have a few more that I'm going to raise. Just, um, I'm going to let them stay outside until the caterpillars get pretty big so I don't have to worry about them inside quite so much or for so long. And I have somebody that's never seen a butterfly cocoon and emerge. Um, so I'm going to try raising just a couple so that she can see the whole process. So excited to do a little bit. It has been super fun. It is work, not a lot, but it's just something that else to take care of. So I, I always love to see butterfly season come and I'm equally glad to release the last one and watch it float off into the distance. Um, I'll try to attach a couple videos at the end of, of one of them that was flying off on me. It was so much fun. So I think that's about it for me. Those are the updates. That's what I've been working on and a lot of what I am hoping to work on. I hope you are doing well. I hope this is a great season for you. I know it's been a hectic one. Kids going back to school, not going back to school, things starting, things not starting. It's just been a little bit, a little bit unsettling. So I hope your crafting is giving you some peace and joy. I hope your gathering basket continues to overflow with blessings. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.